live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live at theCUBE at Moscone North in San Francisco for IBM Think 2019. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman, talking to all the top executives, top people here at IBM, getting the scoop on cloud and AI. Our next guest is Jason Gardner, Vice President of Worldwide Sales for Hybrid Cloud at IBM, managing this key product, which is the part of the announcement, IBM Cloud Private, big part of the announcements, big cloud story here, it's multi-cloud. It's hybrid, welcome back. It's hybrid multi-cloud, thank you for having me back. Cube alumni have been on, is really going back as 2012. Now it, one big event. I can't, believe, uh, I can't believe it's been that long, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to be back and uh, I can't believe it's been that, uh, been, I've been on uh, Cube for that long, so. Let's talk about your new role, and you had previous roles within IBM, dealing with, with the kind of clients and the integration. Your role now as worldwide sales, you're taking this cloud private offering, bringing it to customers, being as the linchpin for integration. Talk about what you do and some of the engagements you have. Yeah, previously I was really focused in on development and offering management on, I'll say, point products and how they help clients move to the cloud. Uh, things such as, as our, our pure business, our spare business. Um, and you know, now I've, I've actually been able to move into a much more horizontal role um, where I have the portfolio across, uh, across the hybrid cloud integration side, so everything from our WebSphere family, which includes you know, IBM Cloud Private, through to the integration challenges that, that that brings, as well as our digital business automation portfolio. You know, I have a personal um, joy, Stu knows I'm, I'm, I'm a fanatic about Kubernetes, <laughs> and when I heard Jenny Rometty say Kubernetes twice in a CNBC interview, uh, you know it's made it. Yes. Kubernetes is a big part of it, cloud native containers, really now has created the connective tissue to make cloud and multi-cloud viable. This is a key part of it. I want you to talk about the context of these trends and unpack this cloud private offering because it's instrumental, it, it seems, is. in the it news. Is. What is this about? It is, it, you know, it really creates that, that ubiquitous layer, I think, that we've all been searching for, that next generation of virtualization and connected tissue, as you call it. And as you begin to unpack that, it really kind of starts with you know, the, the, the rise of microservices and the need to be able to pack them very tightly into containers. And that's really the birth of Kubernetes, right? Was the ability to orchestrate those containers. And you know, so, can, so Kubernetes becomes that, that ubiquitous layer in there. But IBM Cloud Private you know, takes that and takes it to the next level, right? And really what it is, it's the services on top of that, the cloud services, which enable those you know, containers to work together. You know, and it is a lot of you know, open source capabilities such as Helm, Prometheus, Kibana, as some of those core services that those microservices require in order to be able to run efficiently. Yeah. So Jason, you know, we know it's a multi-cloud world. Uh, you know, everybody out there would love to say, oh yes, there's one cloud, I can simplify it. I I'd like to get to a nice you know, scalable model that's simple, but the reality is customers choose lots of different solutions because they have different <laughs> needs. I, the, the private cloud piece is not really well understood. I'd love you to take us inside your users, because they say, okay, you know, I, I'm using Amazon, I'm using Microsoft Business Services, uh, you know, there's certain data things that Google has, IBM has, you know, AI and business productivity and database offerings. That cloud private, what are the services, what are the use cases, you know, what, what are the reasons yeah. where they say why I'm buying this and being it a part of my overall portfolio? Yeah, you know, Ginny called it cloud 2.0, yeah. right? 1.0 was about lift and shift, it was about cloud native, and that really got us about 20% of the way there. And it's that 80%, that's the real challenge, that's where, that's really where the complication comes into play, and that's really what, what private cloud is, is about. And because not everybody can be able to take their applications, throw them away, build cloud native, or lift and shift them. If you think of the big regulated industries like banking, insurance, healthcare, you know, uh, you know government, they really need to be able to have you know, that level of security and assurances that they need within there, and that's really where private cloud comes into play, is those, those really tough, challenging problems in, in the industry. Yeah, I love that. A trend I've heard from a number of customers, you talk about them getting to containerization and uh, you know, uh, this multi-factor services, is step one is I've got to modernize the platform. Absolutely, that's going to yep. enable it, and then I can modernize the applications on top of it. Is, is that the trend you're seeing? Yeah, definitely. You know, We've been building on microservices, and yeah, modernization, it's a journey, right? And it's a journey of discovery, I think, for a lot of clients. 
out there. And you know, we'd all love to be able to say, okay, this is my platform and now I'm going to work on the applications. But really, you know, sometimes the starting point may be one or another. And it usually comes in a, in a space of a digital requirement. And so they begin to app modernize the application and then realize, geez, I need to be able to manage all of this. I need to be able to deploy it all. And then that's when the platform comes into play and all the other services, I should say, that come along with it. Stu, I think, Stu, you coined the term private cloud, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, true private cloud. True private, true cloud. private, true private yeah, cloud. Absolutely. Um, so the private cloud, and again, it's all cloud operations, and I, I kind of disagree in this whole point about one cloud or multi-cloud, because I think, yes, multi-cloud, but you're seeing people use cloud for workloads, right? So yes. pick the right cloud for the right, right application. Yep. So this, it, this basically says, okay, if you want to use Amazon, use Amazon, if that, what do you want, but if you're going to use 365, maybe use Azure, yep. if you're going to use G Suite, use Google, you guys kind of have the business apps nailed down, right? right? So if you're going to use your business apps, maybe IBM, this is your opportunity. This is our opportunity. Talk about specifically the kinds of apps that you guys will power with your cloud, because multi-cloud certainly makes sense for you guys, it's multi-cloud, you want to have that portability and interoperability, but the apps that you're going to power with IBM Cloud, talk about what they are, how the, how's yeah, it? If you look at, from a language perspective, over the last, Geez, it's been 23 years, I think, since the rise of Java, right? And you know, 1995, when the first app servers came out, that, those app servers, that is really where the core applications really run on top of, right? And it's those core Java applications that are now needing that facelift, right? They need to be able to be injected with new forms of AI, new types of integrations, new types of, of really personalization of that digital transformation that's driving it. And that's really the core suite. Right, if I look at that core suite in there, and then you know, what do you do to modernize a Java application, and what kind of tools are available to you, how do you then manage, how do you distribute, and how do you scale those applications, it's very important. What is the adoption of the private cloud, or the cloud private product? Yeah. Talk about some of the trends, how is it being used, be specific on how customers are use, using it, what are the use cases? Yeah, so, so, so the primary use case is to increase the agility, lower cost on you know, the overall managing of them. And, but it's the increase in the agility which is kind of really hard to measure because um, clients want to be able to react very fast to it. And so as they build out microservices, microservices then become independent with one another. You can then update ones very quickly and easily. They, they manage and they run independently. They scale independently. And so Cloud Private provides you with all those services to be able to run those, those microservices as containers, but then be able to tie them together in a much more comprehensive you know, enterprise you know, suite. You know, uh, core technology like Helm, um, I got, I'm waiting for Ginny to say that one on stage, <laughs> um, but a core technology like Helm really provides that you know, robust enterprise class distribution for scalability and high availability of a, of a microservice based application. Yeah, Jason, can you bring us inside the, the organization of the customers you're selling to? Yeah. It, you know, it used to be, it was the, it's the refresh cycle. It's like, okay, my x86 <laughs> refresh, or you know, the budget cycles uh, that I had. Cloud's quite a bit different. And it is. Private cloud is kind of straddling between the, the old world and the new world. What, what are the dynamics you're seeing as to who controls the purse strings? Are they moving faster to that OpEx model? You know, there's no one person who, who owns the purse strings on it. But it does float between the infrastructure team, knows that they need to do something different, the developers or the, the application development team, and then really the, str the strategy, you know, chief strategy officer you know, in that IT organization is really where it's coming together because one thing I think that we've all learned is that developers will find the easiest, fastest way to do something no matter what rules or policies we put down. And this is about providing them with an environment that has guardrails you know, for them to be able to innovate as fast as they want, use the tools that they want, that they're most comfortable with. And so really it's a grassroots kind of movement into these microservices led by the developers, but the purse strings are still held at the well, yeah, CTO it, it, side. That, that's always a, a fascinating interest because right, the developers, they're going to go do it, but they're not usually the ones with the budget, but right. when do the ops people get involved, the business people to make sure that yeah. uh, you know, IT yeah. manages it, gets yeah. rid of like and, stealth IT. And a lot of our clients have learned, you know, to listen to the developers because the early days of cloud, they, they didn't, and developers found ways through it no matter what, and so, so that's really what it's about is, you know, it's, it's, it's like a game of bumper cars, right? You got to make sure that they stay within the ring of what's safe, and especially in this day and age of uh, the security requirements that are out there, it's, it's more important today than ever before. Jason, can you share some data around just observations that you've noticed on trends around um, industry uptake, or is there any patterns in terms of the customer base affinity? Obviously, people are going to 
cloud operations. Um, just Jenny mentioned 60, 40, 80, 20, these the, the ratios, what does that all mean? Can you just share kind of the yeah, trend the, data around adoption and pro probably the, patterns? Probably the, the, the biggest one in there is the 80, 20, right? <clears throat> that there's still 80% of the applications left in the world are still locked behind fire, yeah. locked behind you know, the brick and mortar. Um, and that's probably the biggest piece of that opportunity and providing clients with a way to be able to you know, lift them up and be able to modernize them, I think is where the huge opportunity is. But then, you know, looking at where do they land, you know, it's not all going to public cloud, right? And so private cloud, is, it's, a, it's a huge business. I think underestimated, I think a lot of us underestimate how large that business really is. And you know, depending on the industry, you'll see 50, 50, 60, 40, 40, 60, split depending on the regulations within that industry, the country, the geography, of where they really want to go to. And a lot of our clients are asking us for solutions around that private side, but yet be able to have the flexibility to be able to, to So you're seeing friction on the public cloud mainly that's inherent from either regulatory compliance or just technical challenges. Is that kind of the it, vibe or? It, that's probably the, the first one, I think is, is, you know, there's still that inherent um, you know, regulatory requirements of data residency and you know, how do I get my data to my application. I can build all the applications I want in the cloud, but how do I get my data there? How do I synchronize it, my lineage of my data? Um, and so, so they really challenged around that. But then on the other side of it is around you know, the cost, yeah. right? And if you wanted to rebuild all your applications as true cloud native from scratch, it will take you a very long time and be very, very expensive. <laughs> and so there's also a cost element and speed. You can modernize something much more quickly yeah. and be able to get it to that, that same level of service without having we to spend Irvin all We had uh, Irvin on earlier um, yesterday and I want to get your thoughts on the impact of the Red Hat acquisition news because if you look at what OpenShift is doing yep. with Cloud Private, um, Arvin was saying yesterday that, Arvin Krishna, he's like, this is really enabling a lot of the acceleration for the modernization of the new cloud stuff and keeping the legacy stuff and or transitioning that on different timetables. Your thoughts on that? It, absolutely, right? OpenShift is, is going to be a you know, critical component for our overall hybrid strategy. Um, I'm very excited about it um, and really looking forward to it. And you know, cloud private and the services that I talked about you know, run an OpenShift today. Um, you know, and that was part of our partnership agreement, I think that uh, you guys were at, yeah. uh, that Arvind uh, talked about at that time. But it provides the platform for all of those traditional applications, which we've modernized. You know? And the interesting thing is that we've actually modernized ourselves. We've modernized our middleware. We've modernized some of those products that are you know, 10, 20 years old. You know, everything from WebSphere to MQ to BPM, they've all been modernized in that same fashion. Yeah, Jason, speaking of modernization, bring us inside your sales force a little bit. How do they keep up? You know, what's the skill set that you're looking for on your team to sell in this? You know, they need to understand Helm and Kubernetes and all these microservice architecture where five years ago it was a totally different world. It, absolutely. Um, you know, I think if I look at a skill, it's not a skill, but it's, it's passion, yeah. right? And it's that never, you know, give up kind of mentality, I think, that, that we look for in, our, in a sales force. And that never give up attitude really provides you with that foundation for never stop learning, yeah. right? If, if anything that, that you guys have noticed here over the last 10 years in your guys' journey is that this industry is, just changes so rapidly all the time. And so as a sales force, you, you can't just acquire skills. You don't go out and hire skills. You hire people and you hire passion and you hire people with that never give up attitude. Um, I've been going around, we've, we've been doing our sales kickoffs, I've done two out of the three now so far, and I tell you, they are energized. They love it, you know, they're energized about the Red Hat acquisition, it, it shows that IBM really gets it. You know, they've been telling me, does IBM really get it? And now they're like, wow, they, we really do get it. And they're really energized because we, all the pieces are falling into place around this modernization, and clients, and we're hitting the, we're hitting the timing. It's, uh, it's time well. to hit the, Hit the pedal to the metal, put the gas on I, that. Thing. They always say there's no there's no uh, speed limit on sales. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, uh, first of all, great great conversation, and thanks for pointing out our journey, Stu. I would say that the salespeople are going to watch all the cube videos because all the best content's coming out of the cube here, and great to have you on. But quick plug, I'll give you the last word. What's the pitch? Share the pitch for the hybrid cloud. What your team's offering? What's the what's the core pitch for your customers when you, when you go to them? I think the core pitch is around modernization. It's the journey that clients are on from application development and how you build your apps and how you build the microservices 
how you integrate those applications, what's your API strategy, how do you move that data around securely, and then how you manage all of those pieces together in that new modern world, and then really looking at your overall processes and can you modernize your overall processes, add AI capabilities into that, and so it's that modernization journey. That's really what I talk to them about, and you don't have to do everything, right? Start small, start, start as a pinpointed piece, and we'll help you along that journey, and it becomes a journey of self-discovery, and, uh, but we're there the whole way, we're a partner. That's Great. really what it's about. Jason Gardner, Vice President of Worldwide Sales for Hybrid Cloud at IBM. It's theCUBE bringing all the data here from IBM Think 2019. This is day three of four days of coverage here in Moscone Live in San Francisco. We'll be right back with more after this short break.